representatives said that the landowners would be taken care of immediately. When pressed for details on what this exactly meant, it meant bottled water and a motel room. I'm wondering when people in power might realize that if we continue to pollute our waters, there won't be any clean water to ship in from adjoining states. FERC is very careful to distance itself from the policies on fracking, but the pipelines carry fracked gas and fracking causes irrevocable damage to water. Mountain Valley Pipeline should not be considered for eminent domain because their project is not in the public interest of anyone in the construction zone. As citizens, many of us feel that decisions are being rushed based on money and behind closed doors. FERC says it cares about the comments of citizens. In that case, there should be a minimum of two scoping meetings for each county that is affected. This pipeline belongs nowhere in West Virginia. FERC has the power to protect our water. It is your duty to do so. Please act on our behalf. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Yes. Uh, my name is Sabrina Okamura Johnson, S-A-B-R-I-N-A. O-K-A-M-U-R-A, -A, and then a hyphen or dash, Johnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N. Um, basically, my husband and I live in, at the bottom of Peters Mountain, and we receive our uh, home water supply from the most delicious water, as you have heard, from Peters Mountain. So we are, of course, very concerned about these comments that have been raised about water quality. Uh, in reviewing the uh, notice of intent or to prepare the EIS, um, I concur with many of the statements that were that have been provided tonight. Um, with regards to the um, environmental issues, I, th I think the uh, environmental justice is an important aspect that should be included in the EIS that you're preparing. Um, I am also extremely concerned just with the transportation and circulation impacts associated with full implementation of the project during construction um, as well as operation and would uh, assume that there would be a traffic impact study uh, essentially to identify areas in our communities, not just Monroe County but the whole alignment where there's potential for road widening, new lanes for passing and improvements of shoulders to make it safe for all of our population in the area. Um, with regard to the cumulative impacts, I think that should be expanded on. The uh, idea of the alternatives and recognizing the multiple alignments that, that should be included in your analysis. Um, one alternative, and again, this is concerning with the land use issues that were have been brought up, uh, specifically the agricultural importance uh, land use in our area, and the fledgling organic, or, you know, businesses that are developing. Uh, one of the alternatives I'd like to have you consider is possibly to have a alternative alignment that would not use pesticide as part of their management due to the you know contamination of our waters. Also, um, the the other thing is I'd really like to see a no Peters Mountain alignment alternative and then the uh, idea of co-location alignment to identify those multiple easements and proposals that are out there and do a, a, a bigger view of utility easements that they might be able to co-locate with. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Jessica Mola Abramson. Jessica, M-O-L-A. A-B-R-A-M-S-O-N. I'm the Secretary of Preserve Monroe and I've been a resident of Monroe County for the last six years. I came here from Connecticut and have lived in many other places in my life. There is no place in the world like Monroe County. 
The cultural attachment of residents of this area to the land is as unique as the land itself. Look around you. We love this place as it is. We love our pristine landscape, our clean air and water. We do not need or want a 42 inch natural gas pipeline cutting through our properties, leaving a scar across our beloved Peters Mountain. I may not be a landowner directly along either of the proposed routes. However, I consider myself a steward of this county. And if any property in Monroe County or Craig or Summers, or Montgomery, or any county along the route is affected by this proposed pipeline, then I am affected. We are all affected. I urge the FERC to deny the permit for the Mountain Valley Pipeline. I would also request that the FERC add additional scoping meetings to your schedule. That only six meetings have been scheduled for 17 affected counties is appalling. You yourself admit, for example, that the DOT should be here but is not. Please at least make it appear that you'd like to listen to us and to all of the counties affected by the proposed MVP. I am so proud to stand here with my friends and neighbors in solidarity against the Mountain Valley Pipeline. We do not want it. Not here, not there, not anywhere. Thank you for your comments. Number 43. Tonight, I'm Rick Eads, E-A-D-E-S. I'm a geologist, went to West Virginia University, graduated with honors, got a master's degree from UMass Amherst, worked 26 years in the field, doing a lot of what you're doing, environmental impact studies, were one of the things we did at Science Applications International Corporation, Midwest Research Institute, and others. I teach high school right here. I teach physics right here at Jackson High School now, the last seven years. I got here largely because of the springs of Monroe County. As a hydrogeologist at UMass, that's what we really studied was groundwater the entire time. My master's focused on Boston's water supply. This water supply is much more pristine. Let's put some numbers to what people have been talking about tonight. We have three springs here documented back to the 1930s by the West Virginia Geological and Economic Survey that are pumping out over 1,000 gallons a minute these are the very ones that pepper the entire side of the mountain, about a 50 mile expanse. The recharge area is poorly understood. I would challenge the EIS to, to document clearly where all of that rain is recharging these springs because that's about 5 billion gallons of water a year. The three springs uh, feed Turkey Creek, Rich Creek, and Dropping Lip Creek, just three trout streams. Two of them reproducing, one of them a uh, home of aquaculture. We'd like to look at the economic impacts from an environmental problem that could knock out a trout hatcher that's raised three million trout a year. Um, we have other springs that are raising uh, thousands, of, tens of thousands of trout. We have a bottled water industry, you heard from Howdy Hendricks tonight, that's uh, about a million dollars a year in sales. I'd like to know exactly how will the EIS define the recharge area. This mountain has been folded and faulted. It's not like the other counties that the pipeline will come through in West Virginia. Those are the the Allegheny Plateau. These folds and faults have fractured the mountain. The steepness is extraordinary. Uh, without dye testing, I'm not sure how you're going to do an environmental impact study or tell me how the recharge is not going to be affected from the disturbed land, from construction and operation and maintenance. Should the pipeline leak, and many have testified here tonight and asked you at the EIS, Look at the age, the specifications on the pipelines that we see leaking all over the country, about 1,700,000 miles under some databases in the country today in oil and gas pipelines. What we're seeing is one common factor, exacerbated by acid rain, which we have here, exacerbated by shallow soils, which we have here, steep landscapes, which we have here, a lot of corrosion, a lot of problems. Define the recharge area accurately, completely, protect not just those springs, but WVU found 200 in a six mile section a few years back. So I think your hands will be full just doing hydrogeology. We'll look forward to seeing it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Number 45, I would like number 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50 to come to the front row. 
Good evening. I'm Angie Rosser, R-O-S-S-E-R, -S -S -E and I'm representing the West Virginia Rivers Coalition. We are a statewide water quality advocacy organization based out of Charleston, West Virginia, with a special interest in preserving the state's valuable springs and headwaters as here in Monroe County. The proposed NBP route will potentially impact source waters for drinking water supplies, fishing and recreation, and farm community uses downstream. These Monroe County waters source from a corridor along Peters Mountain where some of the highest quality and largest quantity water exists in the state and region. As the FERC begins the EIS process, we urge thorough research and analysis on the following. Identify and quantify all aquifers, springs, streams, rivers, and wetland crossings along the proposed routes, with special emphasis on the geologically complex valley and rich karst terrains of Monroe County and the surrounding region. For these identified waters that may be crossed, research the base flow for each, the most current data assessing biological conditions, details on Clean Water Act permitted sites near these crossings, locations of downstream drinking water intakes, flow and chemistry at these intakes, and numbers of customers served, and the extent of the disturbance to surface waters and spring recharge zones, which in Monroe County may exceed 50 square miles or over 32,000 acres of pristine recharge areas for these complex karst settings. We also want to see an accounting for the potential impacts on fisheries, their ecology and economic benefits, with specific research on impacts to rare reproducing trout streams on both sides of Peters Mountain. And finally, from a cumulative impact standpoint, it's essential to evaluate impacts of disturbing springs, recharge areas, karst terrains and streams, and all aspects of hydrology and groundwater especially those jeopardizing public drinking water, bottled water, businesses, aquaculture, and downstream communities and farmers. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Number 46. 9 and 50 should be in the front row. Hi, folks. Uh, glad you made it. I'm glad to see you here. I'm trying to um, seek a little common ground with you. And so, let me tell you... Did, did you tell us your name? I'm sorry. My name is Beth, B-E-T-H, Covington, C-O-V-I-N-G-T-O-N. I live in Monroe County. I am not on the proposed pipeline, but I am a quarter mile away from it. I am a uh, dairy goat farmer. I am in the process of becoming a grade A dairy, and I'm going to seek organic certification. Um, I try to make my decisions based on something my dad told me. My dad was a Marine, he was a very practical person, and he said, get the facts and make a list of pros and cons, which I have done. Now, I know that that little red light's going to start flashing, so I'm not going to read all the pros and cons, but to summarize, I did my list, my multi-page list here, and I even considered what pros might there be for this pipeline. Uh, jobs for locals, maybe we'll get some gas, you know, or maybe there's some big tax money. And these things are just dust. They're really, you know, they're not going to give jobs to people here. It's just an illusion. So I went on to the con side of things, and as you can see, I've come up with a few here. And uh, I really, uh, just to give you a little bit, um, climate change, I'll talk really fast. Climate change, greenhouse gases, irreversible impacts, environmental damage, deadly explosions, <laughs> Uh, by the way, enjoy your time in the uh, potential impact radius here at James Monroe High School. Uh, leaks into the air, water ruining existing wells and springs, noise pollution, erosion, uh, lower property values, invasion of privacy from surveys, um, overriding property rights, 
through eminent domain, uh, wrecking the community, harming wildlife, breaking up habitats, destroying natural beauty. And if you're noticing, I might be repeating what other speakers have said. Take note of that, because if you're hearing it over and over again, that should be an exclamation point. And I will go on until the yellow light's done there. Uh, it interferes with the freedom of religion, because this land is a church to many. Uh, this wrecks roads, there's dangerous traffic f from the construction. And I know you'll send the rest of your list and I will send to the, the rest FERC. To the FERC. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. 48. My name is Autumn Dunbar, and I am a teacher here at James Monroe and a lifelong resident of Monroe County. Uh, my family and I live on Peters Mountain and the pipeline is proposed to come through our property. My concern is not only for the precious water and pristine landscape that have been mentioned over and over and over here, but it's for my children. I have two small girls and a husband who often works late into the evening, which leaves us alone on a very rural farm in a rural area where there will be hundreds of strange men from all parts of the world. How easy would it be for a terrorist to find employment working for this pipeline and get access to all of the plans, materials, and the inner workings of it. This access makes it very easy for a terror group to make an unprecedented attack on American soil that can make 9-11 look like child's play. Another concern I have about the pipeline and the hundreds of men from out of town who will be moving in and crowding into our small community. If you look at the man camps that have been set up from fracking in other states, the, the statistics on the increase in crime rate are astronomical. Unless an extensive background check is done on each of these men from out of town, then the frack companies or MVP, can per and, I'm sorry, um, and the frack companies or MVP can personally guarantee that there will be an extensive background check you cannot guarantee the safety of me, my children, or the countless other numbers of women and children in the path of this monster. It will be you that is responsible for any injury, molestation, rape, or death of any of us. If you are willing to assume this responsibility and your conscience has no reservations about the men being brought in, then that needs to be made explicitly clear to every mother, father, grandparent, and other family member because no amount of money you can pay in restitution can take away the damage already done by these strangers. Thank you for your comments. I'd like to ask number 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, and 45 to come to the front row. C-A-R-L-I-M-A-R-E-N-E-C-K. My husband and I moved to Sweet Springs in 1974, built our house looking at Peters Mountain and raised two children.